how was the transition between between being an engineer and then a developer, software developer? What, is it a sim- fairly similar skill set, or you had to completely forget about something and learn something new, or tell us how did it go? It's complementary. So you cannot. I work mostly in the construction industry in construction, so you need to have that domain knowledge. So if you know a lot of programming, but you don't know civil engineering and geotechnical engineering of whatever you want to automate, you will have a really hard job automating that stuff because you don't understand the process. You don't understand the implications. At the same time, if you have the domain knowledge, but you have no programming skills, then you will end up doing a lot of stuff again and again and again. So at the end, it's a combination and I think it's square one. Yeah, it's a natural transition. So you discover stuff you don't like doing. You try to find ways to improve that. Making Excel sheets is probably the first thing we all do. Make some Excel sheets. Then we, when you reach the limits of the Excel sheet, you went into programming. I went into Python, which I will recommend everyone to, to go into because it's free. There's a lot available for you. And then you start practicing, solving problems, and you start each time getting better in automating stuff. And But it's still a combination of both. That there is a path you have to walk to, to get handy in this. It's really a skill you have to practice. No, I just want to touch on, because you mentioned that in aerospace engineering, the goal is to minimize the weight. And in engineering, structural engineering, actually, it's the same case. Minimize the size of sections, so make, it, make the most, the cheapest structure but also it has to comply with codes and be safe for the end user. Um, so tell us, what are the differences or similarities between aerospace engineering and structural engineering? I think from a distance, they are quite similar. Not so. I did a master in aerospace engineering in the structural side. And if you look at structures, they all kind of behave in the same way. So it's, it's the same basic principles. There, where you really see the difference is, of course, and the weight of stuff we're doing. So if you look at the bridge of a building and you compare it with a plane, it's totally different. So if you look at a plane, you have maybe plates of, of a few millimeters. So the whole shell of a plane, it's just a few millimeters. Everything is super thin and optimized. And there's a lot of details in it to, to save all weight. And civil engineering is more rough. You know, it's big structures, big beams. And I think weight until... Some time ago was not that important. And I think in the last five, 10 years max, people are paying more attention to, hey, we can optimize more. We can make cheaper designs. And I think that has been enabled by better analytical tools and by better programming skills. That's the real way of getting more of your knowledge. You know? so, so we know how to calculate the structures, but we don't have the time to really do this optimization. Because we tend to say, hey, what's the worst case scenario? And you take one of two of those and you calculate the whole structure for those cases. Then it's fine. But that's a very heavy and not optimized design, which is basically a very expensive design at the end. There you really see the difference between aerospace and civil is to the degree in which they optimize stuff and get the outmost of material. 